Now we're here for some more F1 My Team and as always the previous episode will be linked up in the top right. Now I've been reading the comments on the last couple of episodes and I've seen the feedback and best believe and don't worry guys I'll be taking that feedback all into season 3 so hopefully you know for next year as we look forward to the new season I'll kind of give the series a bit of a refresh and you know keep things different so I'll take all of your feedback on board but you join me this weekend for the Australian Grand Prix and more action in the background you just see me renew the contract with one of the sponsors along with also applying the weekly activities now to go with that we're also going to go ahead and spend all of our 5600 R&D points on protecting upgrades because as you guys know for next season we do have a regulation change on the way and the chassis and the durability are affected so in this one right here we're going to quickly go ahead and for now prioritize all the chassis upgrades because ultimately those are all the performance based upgrades that we want on the car durability is more of like um a long term trying to not get a grid penalty kind of vibe whereas this is outright car performance and pace so if we protect all of these we're going to be looking very good so we got pretty much all of them except for two which i'll hopefully get at the end of today's episode we're also going to change the gearbox heading into this race so a brand new gearbox will be on the car this weekend and we should be good to go in terms of components we should be able to make it quite comfortably on what we have um, this weekend and after practice we actually had a bit of a rough session the car felt great but the lap time just wasn't there in terms of the delta uh, we failed the fuel management and the qualifying pace so not the best start to the weekend it has to be said in terms of you know achieving the goals and missing two practice program goals now that we're running on the reduced amount of R&D points because in the last episode we changed the sliders that's not gonna exactly bode well or you know fall into our hands the way we wanted to so uh, not the best way to start the weekend but we're now moving to qualifying and to Q1 more specifically you join me at the end of my first push slash banker lap and to be fair, it was actually a pretty good opener. Uh, squirting the throttle on through the final corner, opening DRS as we run up to the line. And it's going to be a 17.2. Uh, we split the Alpines and we go P5 at the time. Eventually, by the end of Q1, we finished in P13 and Rosberg up in the top seven. Worth noting, Carlos Sainz has a five second grid penalty for Ferrari as well. So we'll try and keep that in mind for the rest of qualifying. But we're now moving to Q2. And again, soft tires on once again. We managed to save a set in the first part of qualifying so we get to go for two runs in this session and currently at the end of my first push lap now we did a 17-2 in q1 as a reference so let's see what this lap can be as we make our way on the pit straight down to the line and it's going to be a 17-1 so we go a tenth quicker and at the time p9 so not too shabby we cut to the end of qualifying though and i'm currently p13 and we need to find about four tenths to get into q3 now the first attempt, let's say, at my second lap didn't go according to plan. The exit at the final corner wasn't great. I completely messed up turn one by missing the apex and then running wide. And then to compound my misery, I made an absolute mess of turn three. Trying to recover lap time, I actually just completely messed up the corner. So I actually backed off, turned the engine down, and we're going to go again. I've got just about enough fuel, so let's go for it. 20 seconds on the clock. Let's send it for a full lap at our park, and let's try and get to Q3.
and there we go across the line and I apologize I don't know why the FPS was so bad on that lap um, looks like it's running at 30 frames rather than 60 but we finished Q2 in P12 unfortunately the lap wasn't enough it wasn't a super smooth lap there was a bit more time in it but still not enough to get into Q3 and I think you know like maybe like another 10th at, at best you know there wasn't an extreme amount of time in there Rosberg into Q3 in P8 good to see and yeah we're going to see how the grid lines up for the race either way that's it for qualifying let's move into Sunday and into the main event of the weekend Welcome to Melbourne. You can hear the roar of the crowd out there, which can only mean one thing. Race day is upon us. So here we are at the Albert Park circuit. 3.3 miles around the lake with the street track making for a bumpy surface with little undulation. There are 16 corners here with the best passing opportunities coming at turn one and turn three. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box. And it's fantastic to have you with us here today. But I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, from the moment qualifying's over, you start to feel the adrenaline in your body build up and the buzz in your stomach as you anticipate the rundown into turn one. It's all a bit like going into battle. And the unknown situation makes you nervous. Those pre-race nerves are a good thing. The day you don't have them means that you don't care anymore. And of course, you have to make sure that all the procedures are second nature to you so that they're not taking up too much of your capacity. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Verstappen, Perez, Daniel Ricciardo, They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. And Russell, Martinez, Gasly, Rosberg. They've taken a grid penalty. And Antonio Giovinazzi, Norris, Raikkonen, Carlos Sainz, and Vettel, Mazepin, Stroll, Christian Lundgaard. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. And Esteban Ocon, Mick Schumacher, Latifi, Sonoda and Charles Leclerc completes today's grid order. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out. Then let's see who can prevail today. It's race time and I've got to say, wow, P7, where has that come from? The amount of grid penalties for us to move from P12 to P7 to start the race, it's pretty much thrown all my plans off this race. So I was going to try and start P12, go for the alternate strategy, uh, medium to soft and make that work. But this is kind of thrown a bit of a spanner in the works and I feel like I want to try and take full advantage of this. So I've changed my strategy and we're going to start the race on soft tyres. I don't usually do this, but we're going to give it a go and see what happens. We've got mediums lined up and they're going to be their second tyre later on in this race. No rain expected. The one stop should be doable on these tyres. If not, we'll always go for a set of hard tyres if necessary. Fuel-wise, we're running 0.2. Um, Australia is a little bit high on the fuel consumption, I find. So we're going to make sure we have a bit in the reserve just in case. Uh, no rain forecast. So let's jump into it. We're already in the points in P7. So let's see if we could try and make it a couple more points here this afternoon afternoon and potentially out the Martin and help put the nail in the coffin. Right, let's send it. Let's see what happens. Building up the revs. Five lights and run away. Ugh, quite a bit of wheel spin there in the second phase. That's not going to help. I think we're three wide here. Into turn one, I'm going to go the long, long way around. I think we're just about going to get this. Side by side with George Russell. Look at the speed of the Alpine as we head down towards turn three. Gonna try and go the long way around again here and make this work. Yes, nice. Loads of grip on these tyres. Up to P5 we go. We've got some side by side action here between the Red Bulls and Bottas as we end sector one. This has been a pretty explosive race start. We've got the home favourite Ricardo just ahead of us here. Rosberg up to P8. So both cars running quite comfortably in the points, which is exactly what you want to see. I'm a little bit concerned about overheating this time, I'm going to be honest, so it's going to be tricky to maintain. I'll try and do my best, um, but look at this now through here. I'm expecting the AR to absolutely just run away. Oh, I get so much dirty air. Russell having a look. We're going to have to defend down to the break zone. We've locked on for some reason, but we're going to stay ahead, though. 
and keep P6, but that, that far chicane was so painful. Luckily, we've survived, and end of lap one, we've ended up gaining a place, and somehow we're P6 when I should have started P12, and potentially dropped down a bit on the medium tyre, so I'll, I'll take it. We're not complaining. Let's push on, though. I want to try and stay within a second of the cars ahead, if possible. That would be nice, so we're going to crack on and see if we have any pace to show for it. DRS will be enabled this lap. You can use it when within one second of the car ahead and in the DRS zone. Warning for track limits, but crucially, we've just about held on to Ricardo here and stayed within one second. Obviously, we're not out of the woods yet. We need to try and get through the far chicane and still be within a second, so we'll see how the rest of the lap goes. But so far, we're hanging in there. Now, the good news, we've dropped Russell out of DRS range, so Rosberg may have a crack at the Alpine. Meanwhile, we've done the job here. We've got DRS on Ricardo. Just got to try and make sure I stay within a second for the next zone coming up after this next right-hander. Let's see if we can do that. A little bit deep there, but we're going to just about get it sorted out, and we are going to get DRS on the pit straight. That's all we need, so we've done it. That's the first hurdle of this race completed. We can now try to zone in and you know figure out a way to get past Ricardo, hopefully, in this race. But there we go, DRS on the pit straight. Hopefully Rosberg makes some moves as well as we set a personal best. 19.8, very good pace. Surprisingly, no big tyre overheating issues, which I'm very happy about, as we now start to close in on Ricardo. I'd love to make a move here, but <laughs> look at the amount of time and you know distance that we lose to Ricardo. It's going to happen on the pit straight. I feel like we've got some pretty good pace right now to make this happen, so let's see. Let's stay on board here for a second, see if maybe if it ain't into turn one, it might be into turn three, so just got to make sure I have a clean run through these final couple of corners, which I tend to lose quite a bit of time on compared to the AI. Oh, a bit of a snap there, but we've got away with that one. Right, let's line him up for turn three. Here we go, coming through. Make sure we get turn one nicely, which we do. Using all the runoff, and now we open DRS again. Can we pass Ricardo on the brakes? Up the inside. It's a late one. Late, late dive, but we've got it done. I've got the caster down. Ricardo couldn't quite get the cut back. And we've made it. Let's go, P5. Lovely stuff. Okay, the pace is good. I'm actually a bit faster than Perez right now, so I think we can probably start to work at getting past Perez as well. The tyres are holding on really well. I'm super impressed. Let's see, that's um, gearbox. Wait. No, no, not again. We're looking at some imminent gearbox issues. Watch out for jams and missed gears. It's happened again. I don't believe it. We put a new gearbox in this race. I put a new one in right at the start of the weekend. Oh. Really? Oh, mate, that's not a good time. Not a good time. Damn it. Not just victory today then, but the championship as well. What a spectacular season they've had. Congratulations to the whole team. Talk to me, what do you think it was that sealed the win for them? Well, I think it was clear what the main contributing factor out on the track was today, speed. I know it sounds like an obvious thing to say, Crofty, but fast cars win races, and we saw that today with our winner. So after a magnificent race, we can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take top spot, a well-earned victory for Mercedes. Well, there we go. Um, that was disappointing, man. Like, I'm really surprised. I kind of knew, you know, when we had the first retirement with uh, mechanical failure, I, I kind of expected it because, you know, the components were a bit more worn out. But this one caught me off guard, man. Especially out of all the parts of the engine, the gearbox, which is fresh. I put a new one in this weekend. That's probably going to mean a grid penalty, for, I believe, for the, for, for the final race. So um, I'll see. Maybe I can try and use an old one to get out of trouble. Either way, 
Uh, Bottas wins the race. Uh, Verstappen P2 and Bottas also got the fastest lap. Um, Lewis P3 ahead of Perez, Ricardo, Norris, Sainz, Rosberg in P8. Stroll, Russell running out the top end. Uh, top 10, sorry. Then outside the points, we've got uh, Leclerc, Sebastian Vettel, Arcon Stenoda, Giovinazzi, Raikkonen, Lungard, Mazepin, Schumacher, Latifi, and then Gasly, and myself out of the race. So there you go. That's the script, and that's how it's gone. So in terms of the standings, we're still P5. Realistically, heading to the last race, I think we've got a good chance of securing that. Lando, six points behind. Um, even then, top six is insane. I never would have thought we got top six in the Drivers' Championship this season. In the Constructors, we are P4. And 10 points is the gap to Aston Martin. So, I feel like we can do this. This is achievable right now. And the ball's in our court. You know, it's in our hands. We can definitely do it. We just need a bit of luck and not another DNF in the final race. So... Yeah, that's going to be it, guys, uh, for this one. We're now going to move into the laptop and do a bit of admin work to kind of flesh out this episode because guess what? If this video is too short, you guys might realize what happened. So I've got to try and extend it a little bit to make the video long enough. So let's go into the menu and let's do it. You had the pace, but your car couldn't quite keep up, could it? Well, I mean, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> we, we broke down and that's it, really. What was your teammate's secret to success today? Well, I think Nico drove a good race. Uh, obviously, it helps having reliability. Um, and yeah, you can just drive flat out, and that's what you want, really. It must be incredibly frustrating to not make it to the end of a race due to car issues. What went wrong out there? Not sure, but, you know, it's uh, an upsetting result for everyone in the team. Appreciate your time. Well, after the race... No big changes to the acclaim of calls, as especially after the DNF, we're not going to be securing any Ws anytime soon with that kind of stuff happening. But we look at the cash. Again, there's going to be a lot of um, surprising, actually, successful goals. You know, somehow with the DNF, we're still able to bring in the cash. And that's why it's important to not have, you know, completely race result dependent cash goals that way you can still bring in cash despite a bad weekend so we're not up to 18 and a half mil but we're now going to head into the all important upgrades now the first thing we have to do is change the gearbox so obviously number four has failed so we're going to have to go back to an older one uh, looking at it number two is the freshest gearbox of the lot um, it does mean we are going to have a grid penalty i don't think we can do much about that um, let me check. I've never had this situation before, so I don't know what to do. Um, yeah, this one's 80% worn, so I, I don't think we can do anything about this. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll go back to number two and we'll just we'll take a penalty if necessary in the next race. There's not much I can do, really. Um, Engine-wise, we're looking pretty decent on the components. I'm going to change the energy store for the final race. The first one is a bit fresher. Elsewhere, we've got a slightly fresher MGUH as well, so we'll go for that. Got a slightly fresher turbocharger, control electronics, this one, and then the ICE also slightly fresher. So we're going to try and get the best possible components on for the for the last round. Now we're going to go to some messages first of all. Now Charlie apologizes, but still we get no resource points from that retirement. Uh, having said that, we've got quite a big gap until the next race. So we're going to go ahead and fill that out with activities. So first of all, we'll go for a chassis equipment upgrade. We're also going to go for durability team building because those are the two departments that are going to get affected by the rec change i think then we're going to throw on it's tricky because there's not a lot going on realistically but i'll go for a sponsor advertisement and then we'll just go for a second driver press tour and i think we can squeeze on the sponsor event so that's that done we've got a chassis department event pending but before we jump into that we're going to go ahead and protect the final chassis upgrades so we're going to go ahead and get the tyre blankets. We're also going to get the heat dispersing wheel rims. And I can just about afford some durability ones as well. So we'll go for the control electronics one and number two. And now we can jump into that department event. Driver meeting. The team have requested Rosberg's presence at a recurring meeting. But it conflicts with a couple of other items on their calendar. We know there are a lot of demands on their time. But it's vital that we have their input to aid our design. We should consider freeing up their schedule a little more. So here's the consequence. I think we have done some work, you know, in terms of the chassis department to keep their morale up. So I'm going to decline as we should be okay from morale on the chassis because I've made sure that it stays positive, basically. 
So here we are, the final race, Abu Dhabi, 501 R&D points. So I believe we may be able to squeeze on just a couple of more upgrades to protect. Now, level three control electronics is not going to happen. I'd love to get that on, but we'll do that after the race. Uh, we should get a few more R&D points. We'll do the energy store. This one's zero points, so I don't mind. Um, to be fair, energy store is important. We only get two of those. So ideally, I want to try and save as much as I can. The ICE 94 points as well, pretty cheap. Can we afford anything else that's maybe like a crazy discount? Looks like we cannot right now. Um, so yeah, I think we're gonna save the rest of the points and we'll get back to this, you know, at the end of the next episode. Now, what I do wanna do is some facility work. We've got quite a bit of cash, so I feel like we can make some investments. Looking at the situation, if we look at the R&D tree, the aero is probably the weakest department. So I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade it a little bit. So we're probably gonna go for, I'm thinking, uh, build time. We're gonna shave off a bit of that. So that should help us turn the upgrades around a bit quicker. And I think we may go for a chassis build time as well, just in case. I was tempted to go fabrication level three, but we'll do that during the off season. So uh, yeah, I think we're locked in, we're good to go. And now, finally, I can say today's episode is over. Hopefully, I've fleshed it out long enough so you guys don't get baited by the video length. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe for more, and I'll be back in the finale in Abu Dhabi. Hopefully, a nice, clean race to go out on a high. And uh, as always, check out the videos on screen if you haven't seen it. And a big shout-out also goes out to the channel members. But guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see all of you next time.